Praise God. We are so glad to be able to come to you. And this is Living by the Word. My name is Pastor Leroy Joseph. And it is indeed a pleasure, an honor. For me, it's a privilege to be able to come to you with the word of the Lord. Remember this. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So God is speaking. And I believe this series that we're in is the Lord speaking to you, educating you, and bringing you into a place of understanding. Because remember, our main focus is to take you from just being a believer to become a truly true disciple living in the third dimension. And that's what happened when you accept the teaching that we're doing, living by the word, and it brings you into the kingdom of God. And when you live in the kingdom, you live in a place of victory. Uh, and so thank God for his word. All right. We want to just go right into our scripture today and into our teaching. And remember, maybe this is the first time that you are viewing this teaching, this uh, uh, and you just maybe by accident or somebody told you about it and maybe you're just flipping around and you're seeing us for the first time, well, we, we just want you to let you know that, you know, we are in the process of a great teaching. We're talking about understanding and functioning in the kingdom of God. And uh, it is a tremendous teaching. And I can say, if it's your first time, you can always go back into our website, um, Pastor W L J. Sorry, Pastor W L J. dot com, or our web, our email, Living by the Word at Disciples dot com. Or you can go to my YouTube channel or Cross TV um, channel and you can access what we've taught before because we've said so many things that we don't have time today to go back and to make a review. So, but follow on. We believe that you will be able to join in where we're going, that journey that we're on. And I'm sure that you would be so blessed that you have joined us today. So I want to pray. Father, we pray that you would give us understanding. God, that there would be clarity as we teach your word. We pray for the hearers, that their ears will be open, their hearts will be open. Give them understanding, God, so that through understanding that they will get wisdom, they will know what to do and how to use the word and how to function in the kingdom and to become productive. I ask that you would help me, you would anoint me so that I will speak with clarity. I receive the grace that comes to the teacher for God. We receive it to do your will in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me read our scriptures. And like I said last time, by the time the series is over, you will know the scriptures by heart. And not only know them by heart, you'll be able to live them all through your life. In Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and, the, and then the end will come. And he said unto them, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Go ye into all... Go ye, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Acts chapter 28, verse 30 to 31. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God 
and teaching things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Revelations chapter 5 verses 9 to 10. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. Because you purchased men from every, because you, you were slain with your blood, you purchased men from every tribe and every language of all people and nation. And you have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve God and they will reign on the earth. They will reign on the earth. The kingdom of God has to do with everything. It has to do with on the earth. God placed Adam on the earth. And you know, there's a law, you know, in the earth and in law that first mention is always important. First mention, the earth. That's where he placed men. That's where he gave men rulership until Adam um, abdicated by obeying um, the devil and surrendered the kingdoms, the rulership rather, of the kingdoms of the world unto him. But thank God that right now, that God, because remember this, like I mentioned, God gave him his authority in the realm while he was still in the spirit. And so even though the devil is now presently the God of this earth, the system we'll talk about, but yet, when we come into the kingdom of God, which is a spiritual thing, we can exercise rulership and dominion over the earth, just as Jesus did. Because he did not yield to the devil, he submitted to God. And we are waiting that day when he will literally come back to the earth and establish his kingdom, and then we will rule and reign with him. When we closed last time, we were talking you know, of the various kingdoms, all right, that has ruled the earth. And we talked about, first of all, the Adamic kingdom under Adam. Then we are dealing with the kingdoms of Israel, the kingdoms of Israel. We saw that the kingdom of Israel began, first of all, David was the first king. Prior to David, there were um, judges who judged Israel, and maybe not the entire nation, but Saul was the first king that was anointed to be king over Israel. We talked about Saul's disobedience because of his insecurity. He disobeyed God, and God took the kingdom away from him, and God made David king. So we have now the Davidic kingdom, the kingdom of David that continued on um, to, that was passed on to his son Solomon. Solomon became king after David. And Solomon reigned in a time of great peace in Israel. Israel became a great powerful nation under Solomon. And then what happened is when Solomon died, we had a division of the kingdom under the rule of Rehoboam. King Solomon's son, the kingdom of Israel was divided into the northern um, kingdom called Israel with Samaria as its capital. The northern kingdom was divided into the northern kingdom called Israel and uh, with its capital as Samar with Samaria as its capital. And then you had the southern kingdom called Judah, with Jerusalem as its capital. So the kingdom of Israel was divided, so you have two kingdoms. First Kings chapter 12, verse 16. Now, when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered to the king, saying, What share have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tent, O Israel. Now see to your own house, O David. So Israel departed. So we see, therefore, there was that division. And the, the Judah and Israel. 
And again, I can't go into the history of the corruption and the evil and of many of the kings in Israel, how they were wicked and they were evil. Some of the kings in Judah, there were few between that were faithful and they loved God. Israel ceased to be a kingdom when the northern kingdom, Israel, went, were conquered and they went into Assyrian um, captivity in 720 B.C. In 720 B.C., the northern kingdom went into Assyrian uh, uh, captivity under the Assyrian king Shalmaneser. And you can reference that or read that in 2 Kings chapter 17 from verse 5 to verse, verse 23. Verse 5 to verse 23. Then the southern kingdom went into Babylonian captivity under Nebuchadnezzar in 526 B.C. In 526 B.C., the southern kingdom, Judah, went into captivity. They were conquered and they went into captivity under um, their Babylonian captivity under Nebuchadnezzar in 526 B.C. And you can reference that in 2 Kings chapter 25. In 2 Kings chapter 25. Now God promised that he would restore the kingdom to Israel. He promised that he would restore the kingdom in Israel. And I can give you some biblical references that you can survey, you, you can study yourself. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 7. Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 5 to 6. Acts chapter 15, verse 16 to 17. And the book of Amos chapter 9, verse 11, where there is going to be a restoration of the kingdom of Israel. Israel is going to be restored as a kingdom and the Messiah, the king of kings, as was said in Isaiah, of his kingdom there will be no end and he will rule the nations. He will rule the nations. The Messiah came as a savior to save men from their sins. The angel said, uh, or rather the, the angel said his name shall be called Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. There is salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus. As we read in the book of Revelation, we read in Revelation in the scriptures that we read, Revelations 5, 9 to 10, that he, he, he purchased us, he shed his blood, he purchased us by his blood. And so we can enter into the spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God that is presently on the earth. The kingdom of God that is presently on the earth. So we're looking for that promised kingdom to come. Then the kingdoms of this world, we have the kingdoms of this world, all right, which are under the control and influence of Satan. The kingdoms of this world. So, so even though there are in some cases where you have a few kings that are ruling, but you understand this, that even though they are, there is a spiritual control. All right, Jesus himself says that the devil is the God of this world. The devil is the God of this world. And so the kingdoms of this world, the governments of this world, they are under the control of the devil. The devil is in control. Luke chapter 4 verses 5 and 6 says this. Then the devil, taking him up unto a high mountain, showed him, this is Jesus, all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and the glory for this has been delivered to me 
and I will give it to whomever I wish. All this authority has been given to me. He showed him all the kingdoms of this world. When was this given to him? And if you notice that, Jesus is not dispute this. Jesus is not dispute this. This was a temptation to Jesus. And it was a real. See, a temptation is real when it is within the sphere of possibility. So in other words, if it is not within the sphere of possibility, if there is no way that you can give in to that temptation, that thought, it's not a temptation. A temptation is when it is within the sphere of possibility. And so Jesus, when he came to earth, he came as the last Adam, a representation of Adam, so that he will restore everything that Adam lost. And the devil knew that. The devil doesn't know everything, but there are some things that He knows, but he really doesn't understand all the purposes of God. Because if he understood all the purposes of God, says the Bible, says everything, Jesus would not have, he would not kill Christ. And so he doesn't understand everything, but he knew that Jesus came as a man, that he came to restore those things that Adam had lost and give it back to us. And so he wanted to give him a quick way, a quick way, he said, if you bow down, then I'll give it to you. I'll make it easy for you. Make it easy for you. Listen, there are lots of things that many of you are bowing down to because you want it quickly. You want it quickly. God has promised you something and you can't wait. And you want it quickly. Maybe it's a wife. Maybe it's a husband. Maybe it's some business. Something. And you're going to do things that are contrary to God. You have another God. You are bowing down. See, whom you choose to obey, that person that you become a servant. When Adam and Eve in the garden, they obeyed Satan. They lose their authority. And because they obeyed him, they become a slave. And when you become a slave, you lose all your Property, everything that is yours. And Satan took control. But I thank God that as Jesus overcame him, we can overcome him. And so we don't have to give in to the God of this world. So he became the God of this world. And he said, to whomever I wish, I give it. I delivered it to him. So what I'm saying, I'm not saying all the leaders of the world are demonic. But there is an influence, an influence that is in this world that is not godly. You look at some nations, you look at some laws, look at some abominable laws. You look at the abortion laws that are passed in the earth. You look at the the, the problem, the the, the, the laws that are of uh, men with men, women with women. You see, this is an abomination. And you know the sad thing about it? That when this law was passed in this America, that the nations from the head, they celebrated what God considered an abomination. See, people are celebrating what God considered an abomination. And in the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of this world, look at it. The kingdom of God is righteousness. Righteousness. But you look in the kingdoms of this world. It's not righteous. It's ungodly. You look at it. What is right They're calling wrong. And what is wrong? They're celebrating it. They're calling it right. Instead of functioning by the truth, man is concerned about the facts. And facts is based on information. And as it changes, they change. But the truth of God always remains the same. And that is why we are teaching the word of God. Because the word of God will, when you know the word, Jesus says, continue in the word, you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. 
And this is what we're seeking to do by teaching the word and understanding the word. And so there is a kingdom that we are presently in this world. And the system of this world, the government of this world, is under the control of Satan. But I'm telling you that one day, this is going to come to an end. Hallelujah. This is going to come to an end. It will not continue forever. And so we have to understand this. And even though the, the devil is in control, but God is greater. And those of us who have Christ in us are in the kingdom of God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He that is in the world. The early church understood that. And so when the pressures of the kingdom of this world came upon them, say, don't preach the gospel. They knew that they were connected to a greater kingdom in the book of Acts. They went to pray and they connected with the kingdom of God and they said, God, behold the threatening. And grant unto us boldness that we will declare your word. Praise God, the kingdom of God is come. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Would you open your heart? Would you enter the kingdom? Would you allow the king to come and live in your heart? Pray this prayer with me. Those of you who are not saved, those of you outside the kingdom, Lord Jesus, I've heard about your kingdom, that you gave your life, and I become a kingdom person to offer praise unto God. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died and he rose again for my sins. And I believe that if I confess, believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth, that I will be saved, that I will enter the kingdom. I repent. Receive me into your kingdom here on this earth. Come into my life. And those of you who are in the kingdom, understand this, that God is with you. God is with you, and there are great things ahead for you. So we're going to end this teaching today. We will continue next time, and please, let us hear from you. Let us hear from you. My email is livingbytheword at disciples.com. Livingbytheword at disciples.com. The website is Pastor wlj.com that's pastor wlj.com write to us contact us we want to know what's happening in your life if you have any questions concerning the teaching we want to be able to help you and answer your question and don't forget please wherever you are we need your help cash app and our, our um, way to reach us is cash app Pat, the dollar sign, Pat Lee J. That's cash up. It is the dollar sign, Pat Lee J. P-A-T-L-E-E-J. It's on the screen. And we're looking forward to hearing you. Until next time, don't forget, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God bless you. We love you.